Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about how the football huddle was born. Hi, I'm Heather Hall, Kentucky School for the Deaf Outreach Consultant for the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative. In football, we often see the players huddled up to discuss what play the team is about to execute. Do you know the origins of this? All right, here's some huddle history. American football began in the late 1800 and is an Americanized version of rugby. It was picked up by colleges that began to organize American football teams. One of the colleges that formed a team was Gallaudet University, which is a college that was established to serve deaf and hard of hearing students. Before the huddle, the players would just talk back and forth on the field what the plan was for the next play. For deaf and hard of hearing players, like those at Gallaudet University, they would sign what the play was going to be. This was a problem because the opposing team could easily read what was coming. Father of the American Football Huddle in 1892, the quarterback of the Gallaudet University football team, Paul Hubbard, decided to hide what the next play was going to be. So he gathered all the players in a circle to hide what they were signing. Thus, the huddle was born out of necessity. Professional football players who had a hearing loss. Larry Brown, from 1969 to 1976. Larry Brown was the first known football player in the NFL to have a hearing loss. Brown was deaf in one ear. He played for the Washington Redskins as a running back. Brown's coach, Vince Lombardi, noticed that Brown would often tilt his head to listen and stand close to his teammates to hear what they were saying. So Lombardi asked Brown to have his hearing tested. Brown was worried if they found out he was hard of hearing, he'd be kicked off the team. But he wasn't dropped. Soon after his hearing examination, he was given permission to wear a hearing aid in his helmet. Larry Brown went on to have a successful career in the NFL, winning the Most Valuable Player in 1972. Bonnie Sloan, 1973. Bonnie Sloan played four games as a defensive tackle for the St. Louis Cardinals, now the Arizona Cardinals, in 1973. Sloan was a decorated high school athlete, but his career was cut short after he suffered a knee injury. Sloan sometimes felt as if though his deafness was a challenge in the NFL at the time. A lot of people doubted his ability, including his high school football coach, his elementary PE teacher was able to convince the high school coach to give Sloan a chance. Kenny Walker, 1991-1992 Kenny Walker became deaf after contracting spinal meningitis at the age of two. Walker played two seasons with the NFL with the Denver Broncos as a defensive lineman. After two years with the Denver Broncos, Walker moved to the Calgary Stampeders, where he became the first deaf player to compete in the history of the Canadian Football League. Walker says the key to his success was having supportive programs and people around him. Flozell Adams, 1998-2010 Flozell Adams was an offensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Adams is partially deaf in his right ear and had a long and successful career in football. In 2010, he made it to the Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where they played against the Green Bay Packers. The Packers were defeated the Steelers 31 to 25. The next time that you watch a football game or other team sports, remember the world owes a deaf football player Paul Hubbard for the invention of the huddle. 